Red Flows. No. Hey, this is Catherine Tabor, Senator Padme Amidala from Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Jay and Dennis on Podcast Stardust. Stay on the light side. Welcome to Podcast Stardust. This is the fully armed and operational podcast dedicated to Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion. Misa, Dennis Keithley. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> and Misa, Jay Krebs. <laughs> <laughs> and our rewatch of The Clone Wars continues in this episode. But before we get into that, Jay, you want to remind everybody where we can be found around the internet. We can be very easily found on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Stardust. Yusa did a good job. All right, the dish is aligned, the signal is boosted to maximum output, the shield is down, we are done talking like Jar Jar for the moment, and we are now broadcasting <laughs> to the galaxy. So, yeah, we're goofing off because we're talking about episode eight of season one of The Clone Wars, which is called Bombad Jedi. Uh, this is one that if you've watched The Clone Wars, you most likely remember. But, uh, Jay, <laughs> with that having been said, you want to go ahead and give us the episode summary, please. Sure, and I love how you said... We're done talking like Jar Jar for the moment. That was a good yes. disclaimer. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when Senator Amidala arrives on Rhodia for a diplomatic mission, she discovers that Senator Anaconda Farr, an old family friend, has made a deal with the Separatists for food and protection, and Padme is part of the price for joining. After she is taken prisoner, Jar Jar Binks and C-3PO attempt to rescue her. Jar Jar is mistaken for a Jedi by Newt Gunray and the battle droids which inadvertently creates a diversion as Padme frees herself. Just when it looks like Newt Gunray will have Padme executed, yet again, the Republic arrives, Anaconda pledges his loyalty to the Republic, and Chancellor Palpatine promises aid to Rhodia. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about this one? All I can think of is Anaconda don't want none unless you got food, son. <laughs> okay, you beat me to that. <laughs> I was actually thinking the exact same thing earlier. <laughs> oh, man, that cracks me up. So, no, again, you know, just like you said, I mean, this is one of those very memorable Clone Wars episodes. And, you know, of course it is because it's Jar Jar and Jar Jar is Jar Jar. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think one of the, the things that also stands out in this as well is just the, the resourcefulness of Padme, once again. And her very bad relationship with the Rodian or not the Rodians with Newt Gunray and the Separatists mm -hmm. and um, you know, just how she gets herself out of it. But I mean, just the antics between Jar Jar and 3PO and, you know, just Jar Jar in general, I think probably my favorite thing is the, is the, how did that Jedi cloak get in here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Gee, I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me interrupt you for a second on that one. I thought about our conversation about the Clone Wars last week when I saw that and you know, fortuitous timing because, you know, they open the closet and there's a cloak and Jar Jar is going to use it as a disguise. And he says, you know, how did that get in there? You know, who's this belong to? And 3 PO's like response is, I, I, it's something along the lines where he, he deliberately pauses and, um, and lies <laughs> to Jar Jar about this. He's like, um, I, um, don't know. And oh, he knows that. Anakin and Padme are married. He was at the wedding. Right. And he's covering for this. And so I don't want to rehash the entire conversation we had on our last Clone Wars episode about uh, 3PO and whether he deserved to have his memory wiped or not. Mm -hmm. But he's keeping the secret. He's not telling anybody here, you know, been presented with direct evidence. He lied. He said he doesn't know who it belongs to. It's, it is Anakin's robe. We all right. know this. There, exactly. It wouldn't be any other Jedi's robe in that closet. Right, right. Yeah, and that's such a good point, too, that I hadn't thought about with 3PO, that he can keep a secret. You know, I know I give him a bad rap sometimes mm -hmm. because he does like to blab, but, you know, definitely in this instance, he proved that he can keep his trap shut. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes me curious about the programming. I don't know that Anakin is responsible for all the programming as much as putting him together, but here we are, you know, he's able to, to mislead Jar Jar to, to lie to someone who's a close confidant of uh, Padme's in this case. Also, I love the way Jar Jar kept calling him three. So 
you know, <laughs> <laughs> getting his name mixed up uh, on that. But while we're on the topic of 3PO, I think Anthony Daniels did a fantastic job uh, oh, doing yeah. his voice in this one here. You know, the when the ship gets destroyed, it's like, and the ship is destroyed. Typical. <laughs> Just right. I can't do that delivery that he did there. And, uh, you know, his kind of theme and, uh, you know, and in, uh, indignance when Padme is trying to let Jar Jar down softly when the chancellor, you know, he contacts her. It's this rises episodes beginning and says, okay, you're on this diplomatic mission, but you, why have you shown up there without clone troopers? And she's, this I made this comment before and I stand by it that in season one there all the actors had some settling into the roles of doing mm -hmm. but like Padme gets really defensive in that moment and that you know it's like this is a diplomatic mission and Anika Nafar is a family friend and she's getting like really worked up in the response and all of mm -hmm. this and then uh Palpatine makes the comment uh, well, okay, uh, fine, but um, this is a delicate situation, so I would suggest maybe only letting the experienced people, you know, they know what they're doing in this, directly talking about Jar Jar, especially after right. he sends the ship tumbling there. And so she lets him down, like, you know, you need to look after, I need you to look after 3PO, you know how he gets in trouble. And, and again, three, and this is why I started this whole thing, you know, 3PO is like, I, uh, I'm me <laughs> getting into trouble <laughs> of the two of us here, uh, you know, so... Anyway, uh, that was a standout for me, but I really liked mm -hmm. 3PO's presence in this episode. I thought he really added something. Definitely. And, you know, that you say that I was thinking the same thing myself as I was watching this because I thought, oh, my gosh, just the voice acting really puts you into the element of mm -hmm. Star Wars. And, you you know, of course, you know that you're watching an animated show and you know that it's the Clone Wars and that kind of thing. So, you know, and, and Kat Tabor, of course, does an amazing job as Padme, but you're right. You know, it's, it's, I don't necessarily want to say out of character for Padme, but it is definitely a lot more of an extreme side to her mm -hmm. that we haven't seen. And the way that it was delivered was, was definitely a little, a little different than what we're used to, but well, yeah. And it's not just the acting, it's the direction there. Oh, as for well. sure. Yeah, so. for sure. And Jar Jar just, you know, falling into the the holo projector and then knocking the ship offline. And then Padme just very, you know, like almost like, all right, here we go again, you know, pulls mm -hmm. back on the yoke and gets it in line and gets it back to where it needs to go. Yeah, that brings up a moment that I, I love in this episode as well, um, where, you know, she's freed herself and she reconnects with C-3PO. And there's this news that there's this Jedi around because everyone's mistaking Jar Jar for a Jedi since he's wearing the robe and that, you know, she overhears that. And um, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what the sequence is. She's like, okay, well get back to this, the ship and uh, you know, send a message to the Republic. And C-3PO's response is, I am afraid that the transmitters on the ship are not operational. And then she's like, you know, she's like, well, you know, what's wrong? And then she's like, well, the ship has been destroyed. And she goes, battle droids? And he says, no. And then she goes, Jar Jar, Jar Jar. So <laughs> yeah. that's a, a great, uh, great, just great delivery on both their parts there. But, you know, contrary to what I said, Anthony Daniels has been in C-3PO for a long time. And I'm at best is Jar Jar Binks right. on this. And he does a fantastic job doing Jar Jar's role. This. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And and again, it's just very immersive to to hear those being played out by, you know, the the, the true masters of the characters themselves. And, mm -hmm. you know, just real quickly, as you were talking about Padme freeing herself, you know, all I could think of is that has has got to be, you know, Rabe's um, doing because she was the one that was, always had everything in the wardrobe that mm -hmm. was weaponized. And so we went on to learn that she was the one that probably was able to let Padme free herself in the Geonosian arena too, when she had her little picks up her sleeve, literally. Mm -hmm. So I, that's all I could think of was, oh gosh, I had to be, it had to be Rabe, the wardrobe mistress that was responsible for that one. But maybe not. I mean, maybe Padme was, you know, learned from all of that and was very well equipped. Yeah. So I guess we did neglect to mention this is also Jar Jar's first appearance in the Clone Wars. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And is this episode here? And that gives me an excuse to act, ask you here. Uh, what did you think overall about Jar? I mean, like I guess this is a very memorable episode, if for no other reason, because it is, it, it's kind of on the silly side here. But, you know, overall tone, 
I mean, I'll just come and say this is not one of my favorite episodes of the show. It's certainly memorable for the things that happens, but memorable does not necessarily equate with great. But what do yeah. you think? I mean, and I guess this is my way of asking is like, what did you think of all the crazy antics and things that Jar Jar got up to in this one? Well, one thing that I thought about is, of course, you know, this is after the movie um, Attack of the Clones, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so we know that Jar Jar has been kind of promoted, if you will, to becoming part of Naboo's entourage. And, representative but, things. Right. So he's he's come a long way since that. But yet we still know him as being Jar Jar. So, I mean, I think it's true to form in that one of the things with the Clone Wars that it was originally supposed to be in the first place was a kid's show. And mm -hmm. Jar Jar was always said by George Lucas to be for the kids. So in that vein, I think that this episode completely succeeds as an amazing episode for kids. And it still gives you the adventure, still gives you the fun. Um, but again, you know, gives you that that laughability as well. So but it's still endearing. You know, even like you said, it's not, is it the greatest the Clone Wars episode? Absolutely not. But is it still fun? Is it still memorable? Does it do what it needs to do in that it shows us where loyalties can go awry, especially with someone like Anaconda, who was supposed to be a friend of the Nabaris all the way back? And, and of course, Padme makes a very big note to, you know, go into that exposition about how close they were when she was mm -hmm. younger. So bottom line, I think it did what it needed to do. And I think Jar Jar did what he needed to do. Okay. I mean, fair enough. I mean, for me, it, um, it, it's a very fine line between endearing and just silly, I think. And this gets really close on that line, I think. Um, but you know, that being said, it's just kind of a, he fumbles his way through this for the most part. What I like about Jar Jar is he's got an enormous heart and he's incredibly loyal to Padme and his friends. And, you know, he's very gung ho, you know, always encouraging, you know, come on, three. So, uh, see, there's our Jar Jar demonstrations again, <laughs> you know, and, and over this time, and that I liked, but, you know, he kind of stumbled into being mistaken as a Jedi. And then later, you know, he's doing the weird dancing thing where people are shooting at him. And then he stumbles into meeting the, uh, the Quasal Maw, which is the space, the space slug, the uh, swamp slug that's in the water under there and stuff like that. So, yeah. And the other part of this is, is that juxtapose this to what we were just talking about in the last episode, where Ganat gets run through with a lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And so you go from one like, well, that's a kid show, and they're doing something that violent there. And then this week we've got, you know. Jar Jar's antics and stuff like that. Quite a juxtaposition between the two yeah. of them there. It is indeed. Uh, Jar Jar's being the Quasal Maw whisperer over here, which yeah. I, again, just real quick, I, I did appreciate that because it did show Jar Jar, you know, he was talking, trying to talk to the swamp creatures and at first they didn't like it, but yet he did strike a chord with that creature and he was able to befriend it. And that was one of the things that allowed them to succeed. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, one other criticism I have about this. How many Rodians are on Rodia? Because mm -hmm. there's only two in this entire episode. Mm -hmm. There are more battle droids. There are more clone troopers. <laughs> and Padme, Jar Jar, and 3PO outnumber the Rodians that are in this episode here. I know they're dealing with the budget and there's limitations that come with the cost of this animation. But it was, uh, you know, Anaconda Far and his assistant with the only two Rodians we saw this entire time. Right. Right. I don't know. I guess that maybe that was designed just to show who was in charge question. Well, mark? it's, I mean, it's yeah. really a budgetary thing and they're oh, yeah, going to make sure. more Rodian models and stuff like that. But while we're on the topic, you know, this episode kind of works against the stereotype of Rodians, the stereotype being Greedo. And then, oh, yeah. you know, uh, it, it being the bounty hunter, Wald wasn't particularly impressive when we got to see him in the Phantom Menace there. I, I can't think of any other Rodians that would have shown up in Star Wars at this time. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, Anaconda Far is an intelligent politician trying to do the best for his people as opposed to a greedy bounty hunter like Greedo. Yes, that's a good point. And the fact that he also speaks basic as opposed to, Thank God you know, 
kind of <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. instead of the you know snouty sort of you know language that we get from from Greedo, which of course he was he was speaking Hatties, but still um but, but yeah. his aide spoke that way yeah, yeah true yeah so we That's got a little true. bit of both uh mm -hmm. so at least we could understand anaconda and that needed to be a bit more dignified and then uh other than us having to you know do the trick like they always do with chewbacca well chewbacca will moan out something and then han will say you said it Chewie. where did you dig up that old fossil so, so he basically tells you mm -hmm. what the other person just said and um you know it, this worked out well in this case here exactly uh yeah and then we get new gunray which i believe this is also his first appearance in the clone wars um and he gets captured again and you know we already had the comment in um was it, it was attack the clones i believe oh and ceo bibble you know makes the the comment that's like you know it's unthinkable he's been tried so many you know how many times have been tried blah, blah blah and you know and he still is out there running around and now he's been captured again and we all know he's going to be He's going to escape again in this right. case. Yeah. Yeah. And he just keeps, he keeps getting plugged into places, you know, for being utilized as a tool basically. But, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely deja vu when he says things like take her away, you know, kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, as we saw in the Phantom Menace, but I mean, these two Padme and Newt Gunray definitely have a lot of history together and not liking each other. And new gun rays always had, you know, had it out for Padme. Obviously he's wanted nothing more than to get rid of her. Yeah. And you know, at one point he's got her set up to be executed. They right. call in the droidicas and they're all lined up to, you know, to pulverize her in that her and 3PO in that instance, before Jar Jar shows up posing as a Jedi again. And then he gets the, uh, Quasal Maw to attack and do things there, which again, it's the, I'm just being honest about these episodes. You know, I, I enjoy the episode. Uh, I'm not sure I'd give it, you know, an A rating or anything like that, but it's, it's fun. And I'm just, you know, thinking about the tones and stuff like that. You know, you go from a lot of the slapstick that we get with Jar Jar to a very serious moment where Padme is lined up and about to be shot to death mm -hmm. in this. Um, I don't know. It kind of washes over you in the moment, but when you stop and you think about it, it's like, wow. Okay. That took a dark turn this, uh, there quickly. Yeah, it's true. And you know what else I thought about too is just the idea that, okay, so there's worlds that are deciding, do we side with the separatists? Do we side with the Republic? Do we remain neutral? You know, what do we do? And you would think that after something like this, that, you know, this, the stunt that was pulled on Rhodia with Padme almost getting executed and Newt Gunray being responsible for this, wouldn't word get out that this is what the separatists do, but yet, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's, it's like a good point because this comes, that. yeah. I mean, it comes up like very early in the episode when Anaconda far has turned on Padme and she's being led to her cell. Uh, she's been, she's been in her cell and now Anaconda is escorting Newt Gunray to that cell to see her. Mm -hmm. And Anaconda asks, you know, where's the food and the supplies that you promised us? And Newt responds, oh, it hasn't arrived yet? Well, after we've dealt with Senator Ramadala, you know, I will take your complaint and for consideration at a later time. Right. Right. Yeah. And, but here's the flip side of all this. At one point in this episode, uh, after Padme is, you know, realizes that Akon has turned on her, she starts protesting. And she's like, if you had... You know, if we had known about this, then, you know, the it, it takes a little time, but the Senate would have acted and they would have sent supplies and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is the same woman who made an appeal to the Senate in the Phantom Menace to get relief for her homeworld mm -hmm. because the separatists had invaded it and her people were starving and dying and the Senate couldn't do anything about it. So she had to go back and take matters into her own hand. I'm like, you know, I was like, was that really a heartfelt plea, Padme? I mean, did you really believe that the Senate would be able to do something for Rodia as fast as you promise without this type of thing happening? Right, right. The, yeah, I mean, I guess the only answer to that is just that perhaps Palpatine has acted a lot quicker than Valorum, and she's been able to to see that with other worlds since. I mean, that's complete speculation, sure. of course. But, but don't you kind of think where you're that... going with it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like, you know, Palpatine is caught in an oops, my bad moment mm -hmm. here. You know, oh, they're separatists on your world. 
and you're on the ver you know you're on the verge of defecting to the separatists i got to do something about that right now you know so palpatine is on the verge if he doesn't do anything he's on the verge of having to send a couple of star cruisers there full of clone troopers to potentially fight off battle droids on this and it is kind of a cya type of a moment here it's like oh this has just got brought to my attention and it, yeah. it's a political move on his part that you know there's no denying what just happened here because padme can show up in the senate and make a report about this and so he has to do something i mean you know it comes off in this episode that palpatine is genuinely concerned and mm -hmm. oh my gosh how did i not know this and uh you know more heartfelt apologies and we're sending relief right now but this was all part of the plan oh for sure oh yeah i know it, it occurred to me while i was sitting there watching this that you know obviously you know palpatine is rooting for himself in all of this mm -hmm. and he's setting up this entire game i mean he's playing both sides of the field with this whole thing and he's just moving the pieces as pawns the way he wants to move the pieces and you're absolutely right i know it and every time you know we've even talked about that before with the movies with palpatine mm -hmm. it's like oh no please come back <laughs> you know yeah. kind of like do i really mean this no but i'll act that way yeah and <laughs> you know and then and that gets back to the beginning of this episode when you know he talks to her about like you know why haven't you taken clones he's not so concerned about her safety as much right. as that you know when she's there with a whole bunch of clones she loses her invisibility because when she lands on Rodia, she's wearing that uh, purple um, turban type mm -hmm. thing on her mm -hmm. head. And so she's got some anonymity that she was planning on taking advantage of there. And of course, on a kind of far blows that right out of the water by, you know, turning her over to the separatists. Uh, by the way, I forgot about that look for Padme. You know, we, we're all familiar with the white cat suit thing because that mm -hmm. showed up in attack of the clones, but the purple headscarf turban, whatever you want to call it, I that was one of the action figures that came out of the Clone Wars, and I'm pretty sure that was the first version of Padme that I bought for my son. <laughs> so, oh wow, yeah, That's so, so cool. I hope this is not a false memory on my part, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the first versions. So Oh, that's really cool. Of course, yeah. all I could think of when I'm seeing this little turban yeah. is, well, it's got the um the house Naberi or the the Naboo symbol mm -hmm. upside down and you know, like alternated across the the rim of it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at this thing going, hmm, I wonder if I could take some like, you know, purple crushed velvet and etch this and make this for myself. But did you notice too that Jar Jar was also wearing purple? So I thought that that was interesting because that's always been Padme's house color. You know what I mean? Is purple. Was and, it his tie that was that color? Yeah. Well, yeah, he was wearing it on his, his tie. And then he had like these arm sleeves too with the fingers cut out of them. Mm -hmm. And they had like different, they didn't have the same Naboo symbol, but they had more of like um, sort of like swirls throughout them. But I just thought it was interesting that they were both purple. Oh, and of course, yeah. that's where my eye goes. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the image of him now from the uh, episode guide. Yeah, definitely. His his sleeves are purple as well. You're right. Yeah. But I know, uh, according to the episode guide, that that turban for Padme was actually designed for Attack of the Clones. But then they just never ended up using it for mm. whatever reason. So, hey, you know, no good design goes to waste as we are used to hearing. Absolutely. Yeah. With these things. But yeah, that's the episode there. Um, oh, the other thing I'd note is that the uh, episode guy points out that the uh, Quasal Maul, the big slug creature, was actually based on a Ralph McCoy design uh, intended to be a swamp creature on Dagobah. So that was another neat mm -hmm. little bit of trivia for there as well. Yeah. That kind of brings us to the end of the episode. Uh, do you have anything, anything else you want to bring up about this before we wrap it all up? Did you know that the notice that the clone troopers um, were wearing green and white armor? Is that a coincidence? Because, you know, well, it was Commander Gree that was in charge <laughs> there. But, uh, but Rodians yeah. are green, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> I just know Gree wears green, but, uh, yeah. All right, then. Well, <laughs> that'll bring us then to the end of this uh, discussion of Bombad Jedi, which, oh, yeah, that was apparently supposed to be a name that Jar Jar picked up over the course of the episode and it got cut. So there you go. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's our end of our discussion of Bombad Jedi, which is episode eight of season one of the Clone Wars. We hope you've enjoyed it here on Podcast Artists. And if you did, then hey, like, rate, subscribe to the podcast, wherever it is that you get your podcasts. And that'll make sure you get 
all the episodes downloaded as they come out and it'll help us get a little exposure as well, which we always appreciate it. Then head over to RetroZap.com and check out all the wonderful content that's over there. Uh, Jay Shepard's got his 31 days of horror going on this month for Halloween. So if you're into to uh, horror movies, he's got a lot of great discussions of that over there. And you can check out all the podcasts that are on the network, including Agents of Shield Case Files, Animaniacast, Brews and Blasters, Dork Lair, Doomcast, Enjoy Stuff, Love, Death and Robots Plus, Superhero Suite and Warp Trails. And yeah, so um, Jay, I want to remind everybody what our social media contacts are and where else they can find us online. Absolutely. So we are most conveniently and easily found on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Stardust. And you can also check out our Pinterest boards and our other outlets as well, which include YouTube and YouTube Music, which does have all of our episodes as well as a, a way for you to rate and subscribe and do all the things and also to interact with us as well. And we are literally on every podcatcher that you can think of, as well as other streaming services you know, such as Spotify, Audible, and all the things. So please make sure that you do uh, share the show if you are so entitled to do so. And we would really appreciate that. And if you want to engage with us in real time, we are on Discord and we are part of the Wretches App Discord server. So as Dennis was just mentioning, there's tons of sh shows on the Wretches App Discord server, and we are just one of many. So check out the link in our show notes for that. And you can also check out the link for our Tee Public store, which we have seven different show logo designs available in our store. And you can get everything from t-shirts, sweatshirts, and other types of apparel to some home goods as well. And every one of those purchases does help to support the show. So we would really appreciate it if you would do that. And if you do happen to get something, make sure that you snap a picture of it and tag us on one of our social media outlets. And we would love to share that out. Okay, well, before we say goodbye to everyone, you want to remind everyone what you've got going on with cosplay. Sure. So my Instagram is where you'll find me, which is at j.snipscosplay. And uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I was at the Cleveland Gaming Classic, and I was a special guest there. So I have tons of pictures from that. And then upcoming, I also have a, an appearance on the 13th in New Philadelphia, Ohio, where I will be Ahsoka one more time. So I will also have some more pictures from that. And then in December, I will be at GalaxyCon Columbus. And I'm definitely going to be Ahsoka for one of those days since I'm going to be meeting Hayden Christensen. I just can't say that enough. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, um, and then I will uh, also be having some other things sprinkled in here and there as well. So if you want to catch me as Ahsoka, as Hera from both Rebels and the Ahsoka series, as well as Princess Leia, my original concept Mandalorian, or my fourth sister, once again, head over to J.Snips Cosplay on Instagram. Okay, so upcoming on the show this Wednesday, we are looking at the a new uh, Star Wars audiobook that's available on Audible called Padawan's Pride. And then Friday, we end the week with a look at some Star Wars news. So with that having been said, thanks for listening to episode 791 of Podcast Artists, everyone. Have a great week. And until next time, may the Force be with you.